Happy w- Wednesday morning. <laughs> it's like super early. It's Wednesday morning. It, it is officially season three of Cap Chat. Yeah. Yeah. The date is totally made up. Um, we hadn't done a show for like a month. And I figured, you know, June's a good time to start a new season. Um, so who knows? Who knows what our actual season date is? So um, it is our 55th show. Though. That I do know. 55 shows. Um, so, we're, we're, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's kind of kind of fancy, I think, that 55 shows. So, um you know, it took it took fifty five shows for me to actually uh, get my rush apparel. Oh, oh, you know, I didn't even notice you have your look at that. First time ever on the show. Took fifty five shows. That's wow. Really cool. That's look. Oh yeah, let's. That's good, man. It looks you look good in rush. I mean, the people think the you. people, the people. Man, we're gonna make Ruthie mad, but yeah. that's good. That's awesome. Um, well, it's it's it is Wednesday morning. We adjust our schedule. And we have special guests, so I mean that's really the, the deal. So um, we have special guests. We're gonna be talking about summer break. We have Pablo, who is the sporting project director for Rush Soccer. At Rush Soccer, we like long titles, like I am the College Advisory Program Director, um, and our titles specifically don't necessarily explain what we do. Um, so that's that's kind of cool. Whereas that Tyler Alber is the Director of Athletic Performance. Like, that makes a lot of sense. Like, you know, Tyler Talmans is the head women's soccer coach. Like, instantly, you know what Tyler does. Um, I have no clue what Pablo does, and um, but he's the Sporting Project Director. So it sounds really cool, though. Like... Like, ooh, ooh, he's a... So, we are talking about summer break, what you should be doing. We're going to be talking about periodization, what is too much, uh, how much is too much, and, and really kind of what you should be doing over the summer. There's a lot of discussion. I give Tyler props to this one. This was a Tyler's trend that turned into a whole show. So, that's kind of what um, it's going to be like. But um, today's episode... It's brought to you by Park Place Java. Um, we love Park Place Java. You can order online um, and have coffee shipped directly to you, to your front door through Park Place Java. Um, get everything you need there, 14% off your first order. So we are very happy that they are a uh, sponsor of us. So uh, this, everyone, is uh, is CapChat Live. You're listening to Cap Chat, the number one soccer recruitment podcast in the United States. This is Cap Chat. Alrighty. It's official when you got music going. <laughs> Alright, so um good you know, chat. Tyler, you have a beard. It's summer. <laughs> I don't know why you have a beard in the summer, right? It seems counterproductive. I don't know why. It bothers me. I got late uh, you know. I went to Florida and I got lazy, and then, then that just then it's over. And for me, it comes fast. You know that. Like one episode, I don't have a beard. The next episode, I have ZZ Top. So, you know, that's just kind of how I roll. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, I see that. That's okay though. I mean, it looks awful. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what Jess think? Does I mean does she like it? Yeah, she actually gets mad sometimes when I when I shave it. So like. I don't like to have like a big beard like for our ID camps and stuff, so I'll shave by then. Yeah, and then she'd be like, "I don't understand why you shave. They don't the, these these players don't care what you look like." I'm like, oh, "I think they do." You, that's funny. You put thought into that too. I do too. I feel you got to look young. Like you got to like right. Yeah. So I don't know. She so she likes it. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Well, I, I do I do overthink like. You got. I feel like you gotta look kind of young and and look like you know what you're doing. And people, I don't trust people with beards. Well, uh, yeah. So I have a I have a daughter, uh, a wife, and then I coach like 40 college age women. I'm the most judged person on the planet. Like oh. I, <laughs> I, th- 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 I just wear a blanket of insecurity my whole life. Yeah. That's so true. You, I never thought. I can't that. get away. I can. I can't. I can't get away. So. 
Oh man. Um, well, we got a new logo. Like I said, a season. It's season three. Um, we we got a new logo here, and pretty excited about it. And um, I, I don't know if the guy Pablo or have you guys seen the new logo? Yeah, and it's. Um, I figure we should be fancy. So this is the new CapChat logo here. And I and, and I specifically asked Tyler, I'm like, hey, is, I have a beard. I said, is this the the guy you want to use? And it was my nice little hint at, are you sure you don't want to take the beard off in your Bitmoji? But um, uh, yeah, I, I actually saw it yesterday, and I thought the same. I was like, hold on, is Tyler <laughs> dyeing his hair blonde? I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He looks, he looks like Gabby Gold. Right? <laughs> All of a sudden, I became a lumberjack. <laughs> yeah, is he in in sync? <laughs> uh, we thought this was a safe space. But... It is. I. Am, it's just. It's okay. Yeah, I like it. it. Looks great. The logo looks great. Yeah, and that's the, that's another one too. If we if you know, just. <laughs> and then I have like co- then I have coffee in front of me, and I'm just. I might as well just move to Seattle now. <laughs> You're a hipster. I bet you have brown boots underneath. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wearing a flannel. Yeah. <laughs> I just got home from a Lumineer concert. <laughs> Having your uh, uh, shirasha, whatever that is. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know that's even a thing. My matcha. Yeah. <laughs> that's the new logo, though. I spent way too much time making that. Um, so I just really wanted to make sure people knew that. And <laughs> but... Um, all right, so let's um, let's let's really do dive into. Um, it is a big topic of what you should be doing over the summer um, at all ages. So we we got a variety of people that can talk about this. Um, obviously, as as a college coach for Tyler, Pablo oversees you know all the ages in Russia and, and what is best. And I know he has his own theorem on on purization. Um, and then Tyler A. Um, we'll be talking about it from the from the collegiate standpoint, and, and probably you know as incoming freshman as the director of athletic performance. So, um, so that's kind of the the direction here. Um, and so I'm I'm going to read the boring definition of what periodization is, uh, and then we're going to we'll open it up to our guests and let them kind of talk. And but and hopefully th- there's a lot of smart words in here, so I apologize if I messed it up. But periodization is defined as the plan manipulation of training variables, load sets and repetitions in order to maximize training at adaptions and to prevent the onset of overtraining syndrome. So that's periodization. Uh-huh. So the question is for you guys and, and you guys, I know Pablo has his, his, his own view on this is, is what is, is the word periodization important and, and, and is it overused? You go first, Tyler. Yeah, I think it's very important um, from my side of things, working with collegiate athletics. I think, you know, we got one season that we're focusing on um, and championship season at the end of the season that we're looking at. So for us, it's pretty, um, we want to follow that year round plan. Um, We got a off season training regimen that we go through. We got our first transition, our preseason period that we'll go through and then we're in season we're looking to either maintain or continue to get stronger quicker more powerful um, throughout the season style we're at our best come you know conference tournament time national tournament um, along those lines and then um, at the end of the year we'll typically give our athletes a couple weeks off to kind of recover as far as from injuries or just from the you know the grind of the season so that way they're ready to roll come our you know our first off season period, you know, at the end of the season, so we can eventually prepare for the next season. So, I mean, periodization for us, I think it's not overused and we'll use it with every sport that we work with here. Can, can you put that more in layman's terms? Cause if someone's never heard the word periodization, um, yeah. I, I mean, obviously we know, but yeah, in layman's terms, when someone says, Hey, we got, we got to focus on, you know, periodization. What is, I, what does it mean for, for, uh, uh, 45 year old mom who's who's never touched the ball before yeah for that individual we'll just Love say it's our year plan our year goal um is what we'll go by so you know that first off season period we're focusing on you know getting the individual either gain a little size um getting stronger so that way you know come preseason we're in our best shape that we can be we're fit 
and ready to roll come that first practice um, throughout the year. And then working with, you know, Tyler, the head soccer coach or whoever the head coach is, um, we're going to work together on that plan throughout the season and preseason to make sure that we are, you know, not overdoing it with our athletes, make sure they're fresh, especially if come game time so they can perform their best um, in that competition and throughout the year. Pablo, what's your thoughts on periodization? I mean, trying to relate it to what you said um, to, about the 45-year-old mom. I mean, to me, periodization is a fancy word for planning. Um, now, we we talk about periodization and even the, the definition that you read, it's normally more associated to the fitness side. But in reality, it's, it's just planning it, and, and it goes beyond the fitness side. Like you periodize on the soccer aspects as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's about, it's about bringing a, a logical plan across the season. Uh, it's a starting point and, um, you start building off from there. What's the objective? What Tyler was saying before the objective is. Let's try to make sure we don't we don't burn them out um, at any age. Let's try to make sure that once they're um, in performance stages, that the the physical load is is not excessive and and we risk injuries. It's just trying to optimize the performance along the season through coherent planning. And 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 how does that look though? I mean, so you know, you're looking at so you, you got McKendry here, then Tyler Culver, you know, and then. How does it look? How do you guys deal with periodization? Um, I mean, is there a set standard, or I mean, is it different? Is it between like college I mean, and youth? I well, I think even I think college and youth for sure. But I think even I mean, what I mean, it's got to be different for every. It's got to be different for every every team, right? I mean, because if you're looking at and and you think today was supposed to be a heavy day. But you go, oh, they're they're struggling. I need to change that. Is that part of periodization, or is that just reading your team? Of course, all of this is a very context specific uh, matter, right? Like, are we trying to periodize for a U nine or for a college team? It's it's a different story, right? It, it's um, periodization as important. Has, and then Coach Albert has all the different sports. Right? So, yeah, exactly. You know, like it, it is very contextual. That's a good point. Well, Pablo, looking from the younger age, and just quick question, we'll get back to the – how is periodization as important for the younger age players? In my opinion, it is. Okay. You just don't focus on um, – I mean, it's, it's, it's just different because the individual that you have in front of you is, is different. But it's important to periodize, in my opinion, um, in the younger age, which you, you 9, you 10, you 11, for example, like you periodize as well. But what you periodize is um, – your plan is, is aimed towards maximizing learning. You're not talking about physical loads in this case. You're trying to maximize learning. You say like, okay, how am I going to face the teaching process now? And then what? And then comes real life. That is what I, what I think Tyler was about to say as well. That is like, you start from something, but then comes real life. And uh, just because your plan says like, oh, today I'm going to do this and you plan it four weeks in advance, that doesn't mean that that day you should do that because things happen in the middle, you know? So, so younger age is more of a, like, you're more, I, I see you're not concerned with the mental, mental aspect for the older kids, but younger age, you're, you're concerned with mental burnout and make sure the kids are paying attention and able to, to process what's happening. Older, exactly. Yeah. It's, all a, it's, all a, it's, it's a starting point. And we, I mean, we can actually give specific examples to make it clear. It's like, imagine that we say, um, hey, you know what? I have a U9 and I want to teach uh, pressure on the ball. And because I feel like these kids really, these, these children, they really need to learn pressure. Okay, so you, you say like, it's the first time ever that they're going to learn pressure. They, they really don't seem to have a basic idea of it. So I'm going to do block training. We, we train three times a week this week. So I'm going to do three sessions about defending. But maybe after two, you know, you notice that well, but the, the kid seems to have already be very annoyed by the topic, like getting really tired with the topic. 
So what are you going to do in that moment? You're just going to stick to your plan and because it was in a piece of paper? No, you're going to use common sense and say like, you know what, maybe I got to tweak it. Maybe today we got to, we got to let him rest. We got to do something different. So their minds rest. And then maybe next week I can get back to that topic. So let's, let's look at the summer, um, which is kind of the thing here. And I, I think let, let's kind of look at the high school age players and those, and, and also collegiate wise as well. So we're kind of looking at the U15 and older and um, you know, can you so that that's the hot topic you know i guess is, is the summer so I, the question is yeah i want to i want to read this quote um it's not my quote but so this is over training so what do you guys think of this quote gets your feedback here i'm a firm advocate of the 10,000 hour training rule the theory as advocated by malcolm gladwell and others that if you truly want to be good at something you have to, to devote at least a th- 10,000 hours to practicing it that means that if young players wish to become world class at their chosen sport, they should be training anywhere from ten to twenty hours a week. So you get ten to twenty hours a week, and obviously during season, that's that's attainable because you're in season. Out of season and, and collegiate, you're probably hitting that. Um, so I think for eight months out of the year, you're hitting that. How so? What do you guys think of that quote as it kind of relates to summer break and things like that? Tyler A, go ahead. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you're looking at the sport specific skill for that, if you want to be great at your sport, I think that plays a huge part that you're going to have to put in, you know, that training or that practice to get better at that sport. Um, From our side of the things, I mean, I don't think, you know, an individual needs to be working out, doing weights or conditioning 10 hours out of the day, I think you're going to get a lot of that from, you know, playing the sport and being specific with those skills and whatnot. So, I mean, from looking at it, at that quote, I think it it relates to the sport. If you want to be great at it, you're going to have to put in those hours um, to be sport specific for those. When you, when you send out a summer plan, um, you know, cause the, the thing, and I just, I guess in case people don't know that, so McKendry's Division Two and NCAA Division Two coaches cannot have athletic contact with their players over the summer. So their only athletic contact can be with Tyler if it's voluntary. He can't call them and say this is mandatory. So you're, you're dealing with athletes. So so kind of keep that in mind that the the, the the vital role of what Tyler does. But what what are you giving your athletes? So let's say I mean, are you giving your athletes at McKendry? Are they are they training ten to twenty hours a week over the summer, and is that feasible to ask? Um, yeah, I mean that's the tough part. D two, I mean everything's voluntary. Um, even the, the athletes that come see us throughout the summer that are local, um, we can't you know record attendance or make them be here or really punish them for not being here. It's just kind of up to them on if they want to put in the work. Um, typically, our summer packet that we'll give them will include you know weights and conditioning and speed work. So typically that's anywhere from if you're looking at four days a week um, doing that thing, you're looking at, you know, eight to 10 hours um, training involving that stuff. So, I mean, and then on top of that, what I include in that letter and to them is that's only going to get you, you know, fit and conditioned and in shape. If you want to be great at your sport, you're going to have to put in the, that extra work, you know, working on your game for whatever sport that is. So, I mean, typically we'll give that and talk to our coaches and our coaches will usually give them, you know, skill work and stuff they want them to do, you know, on the field outside of what they're doing, you know, improving their strength, their power and shape along those lines. But Tyler, does, Tyler T, uh, does that, does that follow your, what do you guys do? Like when you hand out a summer packet, are, are these hours close or is that? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I, you know, if, if you're also like, yeah, we're combining fitness and strength. Yeah, it'd be about eight hours. That would be a, a, a great number, I feel, a week. I don't feel it's uh, taking away from their life, which is kind of where all this conversation Josh and I <laughs> started with. Um, so, yeah, I, I I think that's normal. And then, sure, we. Uh, I don't even ask my kids to play that much. You know, um, a, a game a week would be fine for me. So you think you can get it down if you're doing eight eight hours, eight to ten hours of fitness, and you play a game, which is say is two. So you, I mean, your ten to twelve hours is is what you. 
Okay. Yeah, I think that's an achievable load. Pablo, you're looking at U15 and older. You know, they, these kids, it depends on the part of the country you're in, um, you either just got done with high school soccer or just got done with club soccer. Do, I mean, what do you tell the players? Hey, go take a break. <laughs> 